friends today we have another video tutorial for you using adobe after effects today we're breaking down kid cuddy tequila shots official visualizer this came out around last year this is what we're going to be breaking down specifically here where we have this giant face we're going to put in some uh, 3d city here and i'm going to talk all about using after effects to put these different tracked elements like this cool wispy colorful stuff whatever you want to call it adding our background and taking a 2d image drawing or portrait and making it 3d so if you guys are intimidated by 3d if you're mainly premiere or after effects people we're just going to use blender as a free tool to get the parts we need you can do the rest in after effects like i'm going to or you can do all the compositing animating etc etc in blender if you're familiar with that so slap a like on the video if you do enjoy comment down below what you'd like to see next subscribe if you guys are new and let's hop right into this after a word from the sponsor of today's video today's video is sponsored by dell xps 15 laptops powered by nvidia studio if you're looking for hardware that can speed up your workflow and transform your creative process check out the dell xps laptops the laptop features an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3050 GPU, meaning optimized speeds for video encoding, playback speeds, and faster rendering times. A lot of my content utilizes workflows that vary between 2D and 3D softwares, so a tool like this is super useful because it's portable and powerful enough for me to work on the go. The GeForce RTX cards and NVIDIA Studio drivers accelerate over 70 plus of the most popular creative applications, and you even get access to a suite of exclusive NVIDIA developed apps which leverage the power of the GeForce RTX cards. Some of these include NVIDIA Omniverse, Broadcast, and Canvas, all AI accelerated software which can help with your content creation process in very unique ways. For example, in video broadcast, I've used that in the past. Whenever I was filming on the go without a green screen, I used their AI powered background removal and it was super cool. A bunch of other features like noise removal, etc. So whether you're looking for something that can handle your 3D projects or you're just trying to speed up your editing workflows, check out the Dell XPS laptops. I've definitely been enjoying my hands-on experience with the product and I'm excited to be able to work on some of my larger projects even when I'm on the move or traveling. If you're interested, check out the link at the top of my description to learn more. So what we're going to do to start out is actually hop onto Google Images and gather the 2D image that we want to give 3D perspective to. So I'm just going to use the actual source image from the video. So I'm going to go ahead and right click and save this image and then I'm going to copy and paste it into Photoshop. Again, if you guys don't have Photoshop, I'm just going to be using it to do some basic masking, selecting. You can do this all within After Effects as well. But essentially, what I'm going to do is grab my pen tool within Photoshop and separate the face from the background here. So I'm just going to select the outline. Once I've connected that mask together, I'm going to go up to select and click invert. And I'm going to click delete to delete the background. Also, make sure you're always hiding your background layer so that we can have this transparent PNG background where we just have our face. I'm going to go up to File and Export and Quick Export as a PNG. And we're going to create a 3D face from a 2D image by projecting the texture onto a 3D mesh. The way that we're going to do this is by using a blender tool called Keen Tools Face Builder. So if you guys want to use this tool just for one specific thing, Keen Tools Face Builder is 15 days free and you can also purchase a license uh, for $150. So pretty affordable. Again, Blender is free and this is a very powerful tool. I talk about this in my five ways to make 3D characters video. Once you've gone and installed Keen Tools Face Builder, if you need help with that, I'll leave a link to I'll leave a link to the setup down below. Once you've fired a Blender and installed Keen Tools Face Builder, you want to click the little tab on the right side of your screen to open up the face builder menu and it's going to input in this basic head mesh next what we can do is click add images and let's go in and just add in the portraits of the face that we'd like to turn into 3d once you've done that you should see the image that you've added the cool thing about keen tools face builder is you can add multiple images for better and more accurate aligning so if you take multiple angles, you can keep adding images in to make sure the facial shape is as accurate as possible. Or if you want, you can just use one image. So when you're ready, go ahead and click on the image that you've added to start aligning the image to the mesh. And it's going to open up this cool little mesh projection screen. This is actually extremely easy to use. You would literally just click and drag and start aligning the parts of the facial mesh to the image. So go ahead and keep adding these little anchors and trying to align the eyes, the lips, the nose, and the ears. And again, if you want the facial shape to be as accurate as possible, make sure you're adding multiple images with multiple angles like side profile, etc. So here's a little time lapse of me setting that all up. 
Once you do that, you want to scroll down. And before we click Create Texture, I'm just going to go down to this Advanced section and add a tiny bit of Expand Edges. Once you've added those adjustments, click Create Texture. And this will generate a PNG image for our face. You'll see a little bit of a blender loading. And then you can just kind of click into your mouse wheel and rotate off of the camera. You can now see that this texture is projected onto our 3D face. So you now have this easy 3D perspective you guys are used to Blender and you enjoy the Blender workflow, you can do the entire visualizer at this point just by adding in all the other parts like the city, by adding a little bit of animation to the camera, so on and so forth. So it's a really easy tool just to have this quick 3D perspective. Again, Blender is 100% free and there's trillions of tutorials out there to add on to this if you guys do want to keep going down the Blender route. But for all of you who are just using After Effects and maybe you have the Element 3D plugin, which allows you to import 3D models into After Effects. Um, I've made a lot of tutorials on that in the past. We've done a lot of basic 3D just using that plugin. Let me show you how we can take this 3D face and just bring it right into After Effects. So what I'm gonna do is just select the 3D face object in the top right, go up to File and Export as an OBJ. So this is a great example of how you can use something that's free like Blender to enhance your After Effects 3D workflow. Making these simple visualizers that still have unique 3D touches or unique aspects that you can't get just with After Effects. So let's go back into After Effects and start setting up Element 3D to bring that 3D face into After Effects. And I've made a bunch of tutorials using Element 3D and doing and showing you guys basic 3D. For you Element 3D users, we're just going to right click and create a new empty solid. I'm going to name this 3D. Then we're going to go to our effects and presets and slap on the Element 3D effect. In the top left of our effect controls, we're going to click Scene Setup to get started. All right, guys, so in Element 3D, we're going to go ahead in the top left and click Import. We're going to import out the OBJ head that we exported from Blender. Now let's go ahead and apply the texture to this. First, I can't see it, so let me click Normalize Size just to make that a bit bigger. And then we're going to expand the material here, select it, and in the Diffuse for Textures, we're just going to click to link in the texture that we exported out from Blender when we projected our texture onto the face. So click load texture and go ahead and navigate to wherever you save that texture file. What I'm gonna do at this point is just show you a lot of uh, customizing steps and then we're gonna talk about little things you can do in After Effects to replicate that music video a bit better. Now the first issue that I'm seeing here is that if you look at the original source material, the 3D model has a lot of cut out parts for the skeleton. It's not really just like an imprint on the face, especially with the character and the moon and all the other parts. You can see it's a lot more dynamic. It doesn't look like it's just a straight projection. So I'm gonna go back into Blender. We're just gonna alter things a tiny bit to make this look a bit cooler. So this is optional, but again, I think it makes it look a lot better. In Blender, in the top left, we're gonna switch from object mode to edit mode. And then I'm just gonna grab this select circle here and start selecting vertices and faces and deleting them. For example, the circle here that's kind of pasted over where the eye would be, I'm just going to delete that and add a normal sphere. So again, just using that selection circle, select the eye, click delete and delete faces. I'm also going to do the same with the nose and the parts that are darker here that are supposed to be more skeleton like. We can just delete the faces there and same with the jawbone here just to give it a bit more 3D depth where you can actually see through this 3D face. Now I'm going to go back into object mode and I'm gonna click Shift A to add in a new mesh. I'm gonna add in a normal sphere here. I'm gonna just scale that down and place that over where the eye would be. Now we have some 3D perspective. It doesn't look like it's so pasted onto the head. I think it just makes it look a lot better. Again, if you're doing this all in Blender, you can even add your own materials to these interactive parts. You can clean up things even more. For example, I'll just add in a new material here change it to an emissive material, and then I'll go into my render settings and bump up the bloom to make it look like it's glowing. That's one easy example where you can add some extra touches in Blender. But again, don't worry, we're going to try and stick in After Effects as much as possible. Let's take this modified file and just save what we did before and then reopen Element 3D to see all the changes that we've done to the model. So back in Element 3D, now that we have our skeletonized new model, let's go ahead and just create a new material for the sphere that we've added in here. So I'm just going to 
delete the diffuse texture and I'm gonna make it white and then go to the illumination and just bump it up so it looks like a glowing moon. Perfect, so let's click OK and see our 3D model within After Effects. I'm gonna right click in this gray space and go to New Camera. If you click C on your keyboard, you can toggle through the different camera controls. You can rotate around in 3D space, you can zoom in, and really be able to interact with this. Now from here, it's all about little steps to improve the look or build out the visualizer that you'd like. So I'm going to stick with the original source material and try and put in these uh, city buildings by the face. I'll show you how we can create backgrounds and other interactive parts. So let me just go to something like Turbo Squid and just look up free 3D city. And then I'm gonna create a new element 3D layer. And just import that in there. You guys wanna learn all about 3D cities I have some tutorials down below. If you do have Element 3D, you might have the Metropolitan Pack, which gives you like a ton of these city models, so you're probably set from there. So one of my best tips for Element 3D here, to make it easier to move these things around in 3D space, you wanna go up to your effect controls, and where it says Group 1, just drop that down, go to Group Utilities, Create Group Null, and click Create. It's gonna create this little null object layer here. I'm gonna right click and name this City Control, if you go through the transform options of this layer, it's gonna change where your element 3D model is in the scene. So it's a lot easier than going through the world transform, giving yourself a headache. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing with the face and rename that to face control. Now I have two easy null objects, which I can use as control layers for placing things, building out the composition of my scene. So other small touches, if you guys would like to add these interesting little wisping color streaks here, you can use the turbulent displace effect and just add a tiny bit of animation. So I'm going to drag in a normal version of the original image that we projected onto a head. I'm just going to slap on the turbulent displace effect. I'm just gonna mess with my settings here by changing around the scale, the amounts, and the displacement type. I have just some colorful goo looking strands here. If it's a little bit too much, you can just, you can click G and just add a tiny bit of mask around there. And you can also feather that mask just to make it look a bit better. You can also play with your blending modes here, so it reacts with the face differently. And voila, just changing around our, our opacity, the mask feather, the mask expansion. We now have the face sort of melting away into the distance. The coolest thing about this is you can even make that layer 3D, just by clicking toggle switches and modes and enabling the 3D layer switch so that it'll move with, the, with our camera whenever we set up our simple little camera animation. So again, other little finishing touches. If you want Element 3D to look a trillion times better, in the render settings, you guys can go to the ambient occlusion section and you can enable ray tracing. That'll just add a lot more natural shadows. I'm gonna add in a quick background here just by doing um, some similar steps, dragging in our original face, just like we did with the kind of wisping, melting away thing we added. This time I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, just turbulent displace it to make it look like an oil painting. I'm gonna scale it up and just drag it all the way in the back so that it is now a background. If it's a little bit too much, you can drag a Gaussian blur on there and just blur it out a tiny bit. And you can change around the placement, change around the colors, the brightness and contrast or a curves effect so that it's just a nice little colored background. All right, so let's go to our camera and we're gonna add a tiny bit of animation just so it swivels to the right. And you can click C and use your camera controls just to add those little keyframes, add a tiny bit of movement, or again, do whatever when making your own visualizers. Now, if your Element 3D layers look like they're kind of thrown all over the place in 3D space, you want them to be a bit closer to each other and move in a very uniform fashion, I'm gonna give you guys this awesome tip. What you can do is actually link things together so that they're in the same 3D space by taking your pick whip tool and just connecting one to the other. So for example, if I want the city to be right where the face is in 3D space and not floating 100 miles in front of it or 100 miles behind it, I take my pick whip tool and I connect the city and I parent the city to the face. Then I can go to the city and open up the transform options and for transform, you can just click the reset button. This is going to paste the city into the same 3D space as the head. I know that sounds complicated, but all you have to do at this point is grab your anchor point tool Zoom out a little bit if you need to, to see where the layer went, because sometimes it can be thrown somewhere random. But anyways, again, grab your anchor point tool and just move it so that it's back in frame. Scale it, do whatever. Now, whenever you animate in your camera, you can see how everything looks uniform in terms of the scale, because it's not, it's not further away from the camera, it's right next to each other in 3D space, 
and it just looks a lot better. So that's a super, super important tip for controlling these Element 3D layers. You can also do that with the melting effect if you want that to look like it's really coming off from the face. Just pick whip it to the face, go to transform and reset it. And then again, use your anchor point to reposition it. Other than that, it's really just small steps. For example, I dragged in the original image again, and I just used my masking tool to mask out the little falling person here. I clicked toggle switches and modes and just enabled that as a 3D layer. And then I pick whipped it to the face and moved it a little bit in 3D space so that it looked like the person was falling in front of the face cool little touch that I don't even think was in the original visualizer. If you guys would like to learn more about um, just masking images and moving them around in 3D space if this is a bit too complicated, I'm going to leave a tutorial down below where we use Photoshop and After Effects. It's all about just isolating different parts of an image and animating them to make them look more interesting. So that's really about it, guys. I hope that this shows you some awesome steps that you can use to create your own visualizers. I really wanted to get across some of these easy tools for creating 3D perspective. I wanted to talk about using Blender as sort of a Swiss army knife, even if you are staying only in After Effects, even if you wanna use Element 3D, but you wanna convert files, you can use Blender just to export as different things. Again, it's a very useful thing for basic 3D. If you're just whipping up some quick little Element 3D visualizers, this is a great way to add a unique spin. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting. I'll see you in the next one.